Welcome to Methodist Voices in Word and Song Television Ministry. As we meet for this time of worship on this the second Sunday of Advent, I pray that the peace of God would enfold us and cover us not just throughout this time of worship, but at all times. To ensure your fuller engagement, please have your hymn books, Bibles, prayer books, and elements for the sacrament of Holy Communion. Let us worship God together. We share in the call to worship. In this season of waiting, our God comes. Come, holy God, and fill us with your urgent hopes for justice. In this season of delight and wonder, our Savior comes. Come, companion of the poor, and challenge us to share in the gospel of welcome for all. In these days of remembering what our lives are to be, your Holy Spirit comes. Come, preparer of the way, to take us by the hand to walk with our sisters and brothers down the path to service. We sing the hymn, Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Number 135 in Voices in Praise. Let us offer our prayer of adoration. 
God of love and renewal. We exalt you as the one who always comes. Enter the wilderness of our lives and call us to prepare once more for the coming of your Son. Fill the valleys of our insecurities with hope and bring low the mountains of our pride and conceit. We humbly bow before you as we recognize you as the one who makes straight the paths before us and guide our feet in the ways of peace. As we prepare to share in our prayers of confession, we sing the song of penitence, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Lord, John the Baptist proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Together, let us confess our sins and turn to God. Holy, Holy God, God, you witness, witness the, the sorts, sorts of lives we lead. When we when are, we are asked, asked to share the gospel of hope and peace, peace we, we place, place it on our to-do list instead. When, when we are given the chance to cry out for justice for others, we fall strangely silent. When we are invited to pray with joy in every moment, we prefer to grumble about every insignificant thing in our lives. Have mercy on us, God of grace, and prepare our hearts for your forgiveness to have its way in them. Fill us with your hope so we might lighten the shadows of others. Help us to join the choirs of children in singing of your joy. Transform us with the tender mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear now these words of assurance of pardon. Friends, our God desires us to live lives of peace. And because we have been forgiven, we can now live such lives with the help of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We share now in the Advent candle lighting ceremony. Last week, we lit the first candle of our Advent wreath, the candle of hope. We light it again as we remember that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us. The second candle of Advent 
is the candle of peace. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that through him, peace is found. As we, As we look, look at this, at candle, this candle, we, we celebrate, celebrate the, the peace we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank, Thank you, God, God for, for the peace you give, give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for the Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We, we ask, ask it in the, the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Amen. The hymn on Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry, number 139 in VIP. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry, As we prepare to share in the ministry of the word, we pray the collect together. Father in heaven, who sent your son to redeem the world and will send him again to be our judge, give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament will be read by Sister Judy Marie Campbell of the Saxthorpe Congregation. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. See... I'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading is the Benedictus, as recorded in Luke chapter 1, verse 68 to 79. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. That we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus, he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us. That we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Gospel will be read by Reverend Dr. Winford McFarlane. The Gospel according to Luke chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 6. Glory to you, O God. Amen. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaim a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of our God. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Amen. Reverend Dr. Winford McFarlane will now share the word which the Lord has laid on his heart for this time of worship together. A pleasant day to you all. This is a very special time of the year, Advent. Advent means expectation and hope. And we are so happy that you could join us as we meditate upon God's word. Let us pray. 
Gracious Lord, as we look to your word, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The readings from our lectionary, the appointed scripture passages for each Sunday of Advent, has Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, as a focus of attention. But I would also like us to keep in mind Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 10, where it says, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, and uh, verse 4, we read, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Today I wish to share with us on the topic, Messengers of Hope. The word messenger has to do with one who speaks for another. There are other words we could use in modern day to capture the essence of this word. We think of a postman or courier or organizations that manage these persons. One of the things that this pandemic has done to us is that it has expanded the messenger services in the nation and the world at large. There are so many delivery options available for documents, meals, groceries, of furniture and the like. In our scripture passage, John is regarded as the one who prepares the way, the one who is a messenger. We want to consider then John the messenger, his message, and the mode of that very message. As we reflect on John the messenger, or John the man, we note that there are at least five words in the Old Testament and two in the New Testament that covers that word messenger. Totaling 113 occurrences spread across the Old and the New Testament, we get a glimpse of what it means to be a messenger. The core concept is that of being an angel of God in the Old Testament. We want to consider then, how is it we can be messengers? And this is where John's Gospel gives us an opportunity to reflect. You see, the preparation of Jesus' ministry opens this section in Luke's Gospel, chapter 3. It paves the way for the major message of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus' ministry in Galilee and his ministry on his way to Jerusalem. John is introduced as beginning his ministry in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, that is, round about A.D. 29. Tiberius ruled over the Roman Empire from A.D. 14 to A.D. 37. Pontius Pilate was appointed governor of Judea in A.D. 26 and ruled to A.D. 36. He was generally opposed to the Jewish people over whom he ruled. The Herod mentioned in this passage is Herod Antipas, who ruled from Tiberias over Galilee from 4 BC to AD 39. His brother Philip ruled to the east of Jordan from 4 BC to AD 34. Now all of this information and more that were highlighted, including the priest Annas and Ananias, is to help us locate John in the first century as one who operated round about in the 20 to 30 AD span. It reminds us that God called specific people 
for a specific purpose. In this case, John was identified as the one who was to go before to prepare the way of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Luke had previously noted in chapter 1, verse 18, that John was operating in the desert until his public appearance. We are given various descriptions from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, of how he lived an ascetic life, very scarce clothing, very little food, and very comforts of modern living that we know. So that was John, the one who was identified a cousin of Jesus, whose mother, Elizabeth, bore him a couple of months before the birth of Jesus. What was John's message? John's message was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John's baptism was associated with people turning away from sin, an outward demonstration of an inner conversion. The, word, the words used here refer to that transformation that takes place, that causes a person to change direction, to adjust their operations, their method of behavior, and to make an about turn to follow a new path. We must remember that baptism must not be understood to be saving anyone. What was hinted at here is that the repentance John spoke to was a repentance requiring people to be freed from their sin and their association with sin. And so by baptizing them, they were making a demonstration of putting away the old life and embracing this new way of belonging to God's way of truth and peace. Luke noted that John's baptizing work was in the country around the Jordan. Because John was visibly taking on himself the role of Elijah, it is possible that he picked this area on the lower Jordan because that was where Elijah spent his last days. And if we check 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to 13, we would get a sense of that. Luke quoted from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 to 5, concerning John's ministry. Isaiah was writing of God's smoothing the way for the return of the exiles from Babylon to Judah. But all three synoptic gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, applied Isaiah's words to John the Baptist. And so Isaiah wrote, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Matthew Mark and Luke each wrote a voice of one calling in the desert. The words in the desert here going with the voice rather than with preparing the way. And why is this so? Because they quoted from the Septuagint, the Greek rendition of the Old Testament scriptures. Of course, both are true, but the voice the voice of the Baptist was in the desert, and the desert was to be smooth. When a king traveled the desert, workmen preceded him to clear debris and smooth out the roads to make his trip easier. In Luke, the leveling of the land was a figurative expression, denoting that the way of the Messiah would be made smooth because through John, a large number of people were ready to receive Jesus' message. Typical of Luke's emphasis on the universal availability of the gospel, 
are his words in chapter 3 and verse 6. Prepare the way of the Lord, the one crying out in the wilderness. All mankind will see God's salvation. So that was John's message in essence. But how did this message work out in community? And what about us for today? Those who were listening to John that day, according to Luke, were challenged to make adjustments in their social interactions. How they were defrauding each other, supporting each other in love, bearing each other's burdens, not being oppressors over each other, and trying to do one's best to be gentle and kind and not violent with each other. These were some of the social implications mentioned when John attacked them with words such as, you brood of vipers, who have warned you to return to, from the wrath to come? And they asked him, what should we do? And then his reply, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. Whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors, we are told, came to be baptized. And they asked him, teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, collect no more than is required of you. And so it continued that in order to be persons who prepare ourselves for the return of Jesus Christ, we have to make lifestyle adjustments. We have to make these kinds of accommodation for the gospel message outlined by John. But for today, it becomes even more important, not just in John's day, but for, for us today. John was the human agent used by God to proclaim his truth. But today, how do we do that? There's an African word that summarizes beautifully God's vision of an individual and his relationship to community. The word is Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U. And it simply means, I am because we are. According to Michael Wanyebuchi Eze, the core of Ubuntu can best be summarized as follows, and I quote, a person is a person through other people, strikes an affirmation of one's humanity through recognition of an other in his or her uniqueness and difference. It is a demand for creative intersubjective formation in which the other becomes a mirror, but only a mirror of my subjectivity. This idealism suggests to us that humanity is not embedded in my person solely as an individual. My humanity is co-substantively bestowed upon the other and me. Humanity is a quality we owe to each other. We create each other and need to sustain this otherness in creation. And if we belong to each other and we participate in our creations, we are because you are. And since you are, definitely I am. The I am is not a rigid subject, but a dynamic self-constitution dependent on this otherness." End of quote. To summarize all of that, we are in this together, as one song tells us. We must pull together and work together. The words of hymn 144 in our Voices in Praise hymnal, penned by Henry Burton, and entitled, There's a Light Upon the Mountains, sums up the Christian's role 
in our world today. Verse 4 reads, He is breaking down the barriers. He is casting up the way. He is calling for his angels to build up the gates of day. But his angels here are human, not the shining hosts above. For the drumbeats of his army are the heartbeats of our love. In the words of the writer, echoing John's understanding of his role as messenger, we too are angels, messengers of God. Our message becomes our very lives that we live, demonstrating God's love of hope and healing in a broken world, a world whose values are skewed by greed, selfishness, and the consuming quest for power. We become the voices of persons crying in the wilderness to announce the need for better individuals, better lives, better relationships, better management of our resources, because we will answer to our King, God Almighty, who will bring his reward for how we have lived and served. Will you heed the warning and prepare your way? Last Wednesday, we observed World AIDS Day. And this Friday coming, we will be observing Human Rights Day on the 10th of uh, December. Reminders of our need to end discrimination, to break down barriers that divide, that causes us to live in se segregation outside of God's will and plan and purpose for our lives. We are one, and we are called to share the resources God has blessed us with and to prepare the way for him in our hearts. May we be then good messengers of God. And may this Advent season remind us to truly care. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The hymn number 270 in Voices in Praise, Light of the World, Thy Beams I Bless. Light of the affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 72 to 73 of our prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us human beings and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was born a human being. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, and who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. One main announcement this week. You are invited to the trial service of the Reverend Janet Edmondson on Wednesday, December 8th at 5 p.m. at the Walkerswood Methodist Congregation. As I invite us to share your offerings, we want to thank you, our worshipers, for making your financial support to the ministries of the local churches. As a church community, we are involved in sharing care packages to homebound members and community residents and other care programs of the church. Do continue your good work. As usual, we ask you to contact your class leaders and local church office for opening hours and also banking information to make your weekly tithes and offerings and general information regarding the witness of our church. We invite your support for this ministry on television. To make your contributions, please call 876-925-6768 or 876-924-6768. 1218 or make your deposit as displayed on your screen. Let us now give God thanks for this offering and for your offerings as well. So God, we give you thanks for the many ways in which you continue to Pour out your blessings upon us as an act of gratitude. We return our tithes and our offerings and ask you, O God, to multiply it and guide those who, who direct its use in this time, Lord, as we would offer our gifts of money. Again, we place ourselves before you pledging to give of our time and of our talent for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth to the glory and honor of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. We pray in his name. Amen. Let us offer our prayers of intercession. After the bidding God of harmony, 
your response will be guide, guide our, our feet, feet into, into the, the way, way of, of peace. peace. Prince of Peace, you intended us to live in peace with one another. But we have made idols out of warfare and weapons. Help us turn our swords into plowshares. God of harmony, guide our feet into the way of peace. Wonderful counselor, we pray for our nation and long for the day when conflict will cease. Counsel us, gracious God, that we may live in the peace you intend. God of harmony, guide our feet into the way of peace. Everlasting God, we pray for the children among us the most vulnerable of society. We pray for children who do not have shelter and clothing, for children who do not have a meal, for children who are not given the resources they need to thrive, for children who are victims of bullying and abuse, and for children whose desperate parents seek better opportunities elsewhere and leave them to fend for themselves. God of harmony, guide our feet into the way of peace. Mighty God, we cannot save ourselves, but through the life, death, and resurrection of your only child, we rejoice that we have not been left on our own devices. We pray today for those who are suffering from various ailments, especially we remember those who are living with HIV AIDS as we mark World AIDS Day on December 1 as we mark Human Rights Day on December 10, we pray that progress will be made so that these kinds of sufferings would be alleviated. God of harmony, guide our feet into the way of peace. Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer as we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to partake in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we sing the hymn number 423 in voices in praise at your gracious invitation.
us to turn to page 95 in our Methodist prayer book for the order for Holy Communion. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, it is indeed right. It is our joy and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we join in the everlasting hymn of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this and eat it this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The scripture says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with them and they with me. We pray together. Lord, Lord, we come, we come to, to your table, table trusting in your, in your mercy and, and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the, with the body, body and blood of, of Jesus Christ, Christ, your Son, that, that we may forever live in him, in him and, and he in, in us. Amen. I invite you to partake with me. We take and we eat the body broken for us. Amen. We drink together the blood of our Lord Jesus poured out for our ransom. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us, us in, in this, this sacrament, sacrament united, united us with, with Christ. Christ and, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Amen. Amen.
using hymn number 144. There's a light upon the mountain. There's a light upon the mountains, and the day is at the spring, when our eyes shall see the beauty and the glory of the King. Weary words a heart with waiting, and the night will sing so is sending you to be messengers in this holy season. We will go to share God's grace in the shadowed places of our world. Jesus is sending you to be messengers of his gospel. We will go to share the good news of justice in every way we treat each person. The Spirit is sending you to be messengers of peace. We, we will go to share the gifts of hope and reconciliation which have been placed in our hearts. And so may God be always glorified in and through our lives. Amen. Amen.